Welcome everyone to the Bent by Knowledge podcast, where we will dig into what current research and the Bible actually have to say about exercise and good nutrition. Some years ago, fasted cardio emerged on the scene as a tool that was theorized to improve body composition or the amount of fat and muscle you have. Fasted cardio is just that. You don't eat food for a while and then you do some cardio. The whole theory around fasted cardio is that when you exercise after a period of no food intake, the stored form of carbohydrates in the muscle, which are called glycogen, are low. And so is the hormone largely responsible for storing nutrients in your cells called insulin. These changes cause your body to move away from using carbohydrates as a fuel source and toward using fats as a fuel source. This shift is characterized by an increase in the release of fat from cells, which is also known as lipolysis, and an increase in the burn of fat in your muscles, otherwise known as fat oxidation. Practice long-term fasting cardio increases the short-term expression of proteins and enzymes responsible for lipolysis and fat oxidation. But the thing is, sometimes acute changes in metabolism don't necessarily equate to long-term changes in things like body weight or body composition. And in fact, most studies that assess the effects of long-term fasted cardio on body weight and body composition show limited promising results. However, it is extremely important to note that these studies were not conducted in a hypocaloric or a low calorie state. And so the purpose of this study that we'll be talking about was to investigate the changes in body composition after four weeks of fasted versus fed aerobic exercise in young women on a low calorie diet. The participants were 20 healthy, young, normal weight female volunteers already participating in cardio-based aerobic exercise regularly. Participants reported to the lab before and after four weeks of aerobic training and measurements included body mass, body mass index using height and weight, body composition using a bod pod, and waist circumference. Participants were randomly placed in either a fasted training group that completed aerobic exercise after an overnight fast, or a fed training group that completed aerobic exercise after ingesting a meal for four weeks. Aerobic training consisted of one hour of aerobic exercise on a treadmill three days per week. They did a five minute warm up at 50% of their maximum heart rate, 50 minutes of aerobic training at 70% of maximum heart rate, and five minutes of a cool down at 50% again. Now, 70% of maximum heart rate is considered light to moderate intensity, and it was chosen because this intensity is known to elicit the best lipolytic and fat oxidative responses versus higher intensity. So you use more fat as a fuel in lower intensity activity. Participants were placed on a standardized diet that put them in a 500 calorie energy deficit, basically meaning they ate 500 calories less than what they would need on a daily basis. And around exercise, The fed group consumed the 250 calorie shake containing 40 grams of carbohydrates and 20 grams of protein right before exercise. And the fasted group consumed the same shake right after exercise. Overall, there was no effect of the intervention on any measured variable, but of important note, both groups lost weight and improved body composition throughout the study, indicating that at least the exercise and the calorie deficit were effective. It seems that the effects on body weight and composition must be considered on a longer term scale and not just acutely during exercise. For example, just because you burn more fat during exercise does not necessarily mean that you're gonna lose fat over the course of a few days. There are a few limitations that are important to mention. The testing period was pretty short, although you would expect there to be some kind of body composition change just a few weeks into this, considering the calorie deficit and the exercise, a longer study may have produced other results. And one of the most important limitations to discuss is that the fasted group consumed the shake right after exercise. And the shake was largely carbohydrate baked. And we know that eating a carbohydrate dense shake immediately after exercise would completely shut down lipolysis and oxidation because of insulin release. It's gonna inhibit any kind of fat metabolism. And therefore any effect of fasted cardio could only be attributed to the metabolic changes that occurred during the hour of exercise, which was really minimal. It was only three hours per week. So should you add fasted cardio to your routine? The answer is, I mean, it could go either way. If you're looking to lose body weight or body fat, it might not be your best choice, to be honest. 
Even so, several studies have found that other markers of overall health like glucose regulation and insulin sensitivity can be improved with the regular practice of fasting cardio. So if you're looking for more health-related benefits, it might be worth looking into. If that's the case, you should work to get at least 150 minutes of aerobic activity weekly based on current guidelines for health. And the easiest way to do it fasted is to roll out of bed, brush your teeth, strap on some shoes, and get going. However, prior to making any changes, always, always consult your physician. And if they give you the green light and you experience any symptoms like dizziness or headaches because you're fasted, stop what you're doing immediately and consult your physician again. Hey, what's up guys? Thanks so much for joining me on my first ever five minute journal club. If you like that little touch of science, make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel. Also, if you're interested in learning more about any topic in exercise and nutrition, feel free to reach out to me on any of my social media platforms or just comment below.